The Buffalo Bills fall to third in the AFC East and ninth in the AFC after dropping another loss to the Cincinnati Bengals. This week on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You are now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Bills Mafia, welcome in and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. My name is Justin and I will be your host today. Uh, Another tough one out there. I'm dropping a game to the Bengals. Um, And a lot lot to talk about with this one. Um, But I'm going to kind of... I'm going to talk about the game a little bit, but I want to focus more on kind of the macro of what the rest of the season looks like um, with kind of the implication that, that the Bills have set themselves up for uh with this point um so i want to start by saying this loss to the Bengals. i think if we were looking at it at this at the beginning of the year we didn't see any records um this would kind of be you know a shit loss of a team that's had our numbers that we haven't been able to get by um but i guess probably wouldn't be expecting it to to be the fourth loss of the season at this point um so the the loss to the Bengals itself isn't isn't really eating at me. It's that it's another loss inside the conference um, that you've lost. You know some games in there that you definitely shouldn't have. You know, looking at the Jets, looking at the Patriots, uh, you've, you've played teams like the Bucks and the Giants way closer than it should have been, um, and and it's kind of all just setting up to. We're kind of getting into the the must win territory here, um, and it's it's not not a spot that I thought we would be in um, with the success that we've seen from this team over like the last four years. Um, to be at the midway point of the season, we're, we're looking at the in the hunt graphic again, uh, which we haven't really had to deal with in a while. Um, and I mean, you're you're at this point talking maybe two, two, maybe three losses left to play with for the season. And you got a hell of a stretch coming up. And and I would honestly lean more towards two losses to play with at this point. Um just with how competitive the AFC is and how that kind of like I don't know, five through seven playoff spots are going to shake out um the fact that all of your losses have come inside the conference it, we're not we're not going to get any help from tiebreakers uh yeah there <laughs> not much to play with here and you know the weird thing is we dropped to third in the afc east yesterday with the jets not playing um but i mean the dolphins do take a loss so, you know, you're really still only sitting a game back inside the division. Um, so, theoretically, the division is is still in play. Um, but it's really hard to look at, at any of that with, you know, some of these performances the Bills have been putting out. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about this game against the Bengals and... The thing I want to start with off the top is is I've seen a lot of criticism for the defense, um, in particular not being able to get, you know, that last stop to to give the Bills offense one more chance uh, to take the lead. You know, Bills score a touchdown, go for two, get it, and and now a touchdown and a PAT is it's going to win the game. Um, was the defense perfect yesterday? Absolutely not. Um, allowed a ton of yards. Um, not getting, you know, um, pass rush with four. So they have to blitz a lot. Um, Burroughs, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the league against the blitz. Um, so, so you're really fighting a losing battle there. Um, but with that being said, you know, this is a high powered offense coming in and not for nothing, you know, the bills did give up a lot of yards, but the defense gave the offense a ton of chances to uh, put this game away. Now, granted, you know, maybe the Bengals are taking their foot off the gas a little bit, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
but it didn't really look like that to me and the defense was getting stop after stop giving the ball back to the offense you know they had they had the the first drive that they gave up against the Bengals is what it is we see that happen almost every week i would love to see something different happen um but for years it's really been kind of that first drive is the defense figuring out what the offense wants to do and then they adjust um but i mean they allow three second half points from the Bengals, and the offense doesn't do anything from their first drive to their last drive uh in between there you got something seven eight possessions um and they managed to get three points for the rest of the game and it's not just you know not converting points but if the, there wasn't just any real sustained drives from the offense you know we're we're playing a field position game the whole game you know it seems like every Bengals starting drive is you know plus territory you know somewhere around the 40 yard line um, and the Bills are starting, you know, inside their own 10. Uh, well, I mean, that that type of thing happens when you don't get a few first downs and you, you're punting from inside your 10. You know, the, the you're going to be playing behind the chains the whole game. Uh, so just kind of putting the, def the defense in in bad positions all game. And like I said, I, I don't think the defense was like, elite i don't think they were excellent um but i think they did enough to win you this game and when you're playing against an offense like the Bengals have you know for the most part we're able to shut down jamar chase um t higgins had a day an offense like that is kind of what you expect from teams playing against the bills right you like you have to figure that they're going to get theirs try to limit that as much as possible and you expect your offense to to keep pace and we just didn't see that at, at all um even you know punting sam martin not doing not doing the defense any favors uh looks like he used up all his all his good punts last week uh, maybe we should have gone for a couple of those fourth downs and he'd have a couple left in the tank uh, but thought he had a pretty bad day and then you, you just combine all these things and Yes, there's criticism to be had for the defense. I think it gets put under, you know, a bit more of a microscope because it's, you know, Sean McDermott's defense. He decided to be the defensive coordinator and the head coach. But I mean, you're talking a defensive unit slowing down that Bengals team when you came into the game down. Daquan Jones, Matt Milano, uh, Trey White. You know, in this game, you also lose... Benford and Jackson both missed time. Uh, Terrell Bernard comes out of the game. Micah Hyde missed some time in the game. Um, just these injuries piling up, and it is what it is. That's part of football. You know, next man up, you, you got to find a way to get it done. Um, but the defense being the group that's keeping the team in a game when, you know, they're down like half their starters, um, you're bringing in. Linval Joseph and Razul Douglas, you know, as deadline acquisitions, and they're coming in right away and playing. Um, you know, that defense has been banged up left and right. And what what are we down on the offensive side of the ball? Dawson Knox? I mean, it, it's not nothing as a loss, but you also had, you know, that kind of expanded Dalton Kincaid's role, and he's really been thriving. Um, so, to me, I, I really can't get anywhere except for putting this one on on the offense you know we can talk coaching you know we can talk dorsey not a good game for dorsey we can throw officiating in there you know ref suck um i'm not gonna sit here and and do do the officiating game though um i think if you if you're watching football across the whole nfl um you'll realize that this is is not a unique situation to this game to the bills uh, it's league-wide issue that's a story for another day um nfl officiating sucks um and it, it's a real shame that 
the lack of consistency, the the just the overall terribleness of the ref refs is affecting games. Um, but like I said, that's that's happening on a, a league wide scale. Um, so really, what it comes down to is, you know, part of being a really good team, part of being an elite team now, is it you're gonna you're gonna have to overcome shitty officiating. It, it's just. <laughs> It's part of the game. Um, you have to do enough to not leave it in the ref's hands. And uh, I have to watch the game again, but I, I'm sure there's some calls that, you know, went against the Bengals that weren't good too. I, I, I know there was um, one holding call the Bengals got called against them that I remember that was pretty bad. Um, I don't know what to say about that other than it. <laughs> As of right now, it's part of the game, so uh, it's going to be worse for you some weeks than others. But it's it is what it is. It's it's not going away this year, so you got to find a way to to do enough that you're not putting the game into the refs' hands. Um, and for me, that that comes down to offense right now. Um, you have a top whatever you want to call Josh Allen top three, five quarterback, whatever you want to call him in the league. Um, and you have, you have the offense basically that you wanted from the beginning of the season. Still, like I said, Knox is down, um, but you have all the weapons and um, it just seems to me like this, they have like this plan of, we don't want to run Josh Allen because, you know, we want him healthy for the playoffs you know, the, the long-term career for Josh Allen, it's more beneficial for him to be a pocket passer than running. I get all that. I, I truly do. Um, and that's fine with me on paper. Um, but you also have Josh Allen in his prime right now. And part of what has made him so good throughout his career is that threat of the run. Um, it opens up our run game. It, if he's the leading rusher, it is what it is. But at least we have a ground game. Um, it makes the RPOs more effective. It opens up the passing game. Um, they have to, you know, give one or two players on the defense to start spying the quarterback. And that gets you some mismatches. Um, I'm all for, you know, wanting to protect the longevity of Allen's career. I'm all for, you know, the idea of wanting to, him to be healthy in the playoffs. Um, but the NFL is hard and, you know, kind of forcing yourself into playing left-handed, like in the hopes that when you get to the playoffs, it all works out for you. It's kind of what they're doing right now. And it's not really working, um, even against, you know, these bad teams that you should be putting a beating on, like the giants, the Patriots, um, it, it's not working. Um, and pretty much every game since the Jacksonville game I mean we're seeing the offense kind of look listless I guess it was a little bit better in the Bucks game I'll give them that um but the offense just kind of looking meh boring vanilla not maintaining possessions um putting themselves in third and longs and you know all of a sudden fourth quarterbacks against the wall and they kind of unleashed Josh Allen and we hit this tempo um, and Josh Allen's letting it fly. He's running, you know, he's doing all those things. And then all of a sudden in the fourth quarter, our offense looks unstoppable. And, you know, in this game, unfortunately, Knox had, or I'm sorry, Kincaid has that fumble. Um, I can't hold it against him too much. It's that, that's a, a rookie learning lesson, you know, maybe, Maybe we're not jumping over people. Maybe you get down when you know you got the first down and you're not getting a ton more. But, I mean, Kincaid balled out yesterday. He's really evolved. Um, he's already, you know, taken over as the number two option in this passing game. And I didn't really expect that till at least next year, uh, especially when you have Gabe Davis playing in a contract year. Um kind of thought you know maybe Kincaid would emerge a little bit this year um you let King uh Davis walk in free agency and Kincaid becomes that second option you have Davis here and you know in a game that 
would have been really nice to win. He has two targets and zero catches. And I I know the team loves the way Gabe Davis blocks. I know he contributes to the team in ways that don't always show up on the stat sheet. That's not enough right now for an offense that can't find its footing. And at this point, he's kind of moved back down the pecking order to the fourth option. I mean, with Diggs is balling out like he always is. Um, Kincaid's emerging and Khalil Shakir is starting to, you know, be a lot more consistent. Um, I believe he has 19 targets on the season and has 18 catches. Um, he's becoming much more of a go-to guy for Allen than Davis is. And, you know, at, at what point can you continue giving Gabe Davis the snap share that he gets? And there's a ton of games where he has a higher snap share than Stefan Diggs because he he plays a role in, you know, blocking for the run game and all that. Uh, especially going back to some more 11 personnel with knocks out. If you're going to be spreading the ball around, I, I, I just don't know how you continue giving Gabe Davis the snap share that he gets. And, and this is coming off of, you know, he had a monster game last week was you know a non-factor the week before he's a non-factor this week it's just not enough consistency um for a wide receiver too and you know this this is something that was uh, a hot topic you know as he kind of got pr promoted to wide receiver too it, it was a big debate on you know whether enough whether or not he had enough of a skill set to be that guy and you know, I was on I was on the team of I love Gabe Davis and hopefully he can develop and I thought he would, you know, give you a little bit more. And right now I'm I'm sitting here telling you I was wrong. Um I think he thrives as that like third, fourth option when the play goes off script and he can be great at that. Um when you're looking at contract extension, it the money he's gonna get you you can't pay him for uh for that role. Um so, I mean, at this point, you know, I, I, I'm encouraged by what we're seeing from Kincaid and Shakir kind of stepping up in those roles. Uh, but even looking at Sherfield and Hardy, I mean, these were two big free agent acquisitions that you're getting next to nothing from. Um, and, you know, is this Dorsey? Is this Allen not having trust? Is it? utilization maybe we got to get those guys in there a little bit more than davis uh i'm not sure but you're you're getting pretty you're getting into the shit or get off the pot time and you know we have three games remaining before the bye and you know uh we got denver then we have the jets again and then philly um before the bye and you know that there's a really tough remaining schedule left and you know some of these games that we're you know looking at is easy wins air quotes on that uh before the season started i mean you've already lost to the jets you've already dropped one to the patriots you're looking at a denver team that just managed to beat kansas city um we all know who philly is i mean at this point, I, I can't take any games that we have left for granted. And, you know, like I said at the top of this episode, you got maybe two losses left to play with for the rest of the season. And, I mean, down the stretch, you know, not even talking about the division games. Um, well, I'll throw them in there. You got the Jets and the Patriots. You've already lost to both of those teams. Um, you have Miami again. Who, you know, you put the beat down on Miami, but we haven't looked like the same team since. Um, and <laughs> throw Denver in there, and that's basically our quote unquote easy games for the rest of the schedule. And then you're still looking at Philly, Dallas, um, you got the Chargers in there, and you got Kansas City. Um at this juncture, you know, when we're talking before the season started, um, about this team being a Super Bowl contender. We got to start looking at whether or not this team is actually going to make the playoffs. Um, 
We're gonna leave it at that for right now. Um, talk more about that break. More about that after the break. Stick around. Hey, this is Bill's Vader. Now back to the show. Welcome back in, and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Um, if you have if you made it this far and you haven't done so yet, uh, do me a favor: drop a like, share, subscribe, drop a comment about your thoughts of this team right now as we're kind of sitting in at the halfway point in the season. Um, I want to get back and talk a little bit about what this team looks like going forward. Um, cause we're, we're kind of in, in this urgency stretch. You know, there's, there's not much room for error, error at this point. Um, I'm talking before the break about, you know, is this, is this team even going to make the playoffs at this point, which is absurd for me to kind of think about right now, um, based on how I was feeling about this team before the season started, um, and kind of where I still feel like the team should be at. Um, but they put themselves in quite a hole right now. So, um, kind of looking at what they have to do going forward. Um, so I, I don't think they're super far off on offense. Um, I think they're showing, you know, later in these games that they have the horses to get it done. And, you know, granted, some of the, these teams are playing with leads, you know, they're giving you a little bit more underneath and whatnot. Um, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, even if you're down a little bit, you know, typically we've been able to really get the offense fired up and, and erase those deficits. And it's not happening this year. Um, I think seeing the emergence of Kincaid, you know, the consistency of Diggs, um, Khalil Shakir starting to make plays. I, I think the players are there that they can still turn the season around. Um, I think it's a matter of play calling and it's a matter of urgency and it's a matter of you got to unleash Josh Allen. And we saw it a little bit, you know, last week he was doing some more running. He was letting it fly. And here's my thing with Allen. I'm all for him playing smarter. I'm all for him. You know, after you get the first down and you're about to run into three people, slide, get out of bounds. Don't drop your shoulder through three people. You're not getting through it. I'm all for that. Uh, I think there's a certain degree of playing smart versus what we're seeing from, from the Bills right now. And... He just looks too scared to make a mistake. He looks he looks like he's not allowed to run. You know, how many times we see him rolling to the right and he's got space there. He's trying to make a throw anyways when he could have ran for the first down. I mean, this team just needs to get first downs right now to sustain drives. We're, we, we lost the time of possession to Cincinnati like almost three to one. And, you know, I, I think part of this idea of not going tempo... Um, early in games is kind of this conservative mindset of, you know, if you don't sustain a drive and you're going up tempo, you're putting the defense back out there um, real quick and in a bad spot. You're putting the defense back out there real quick and in a bad spot all game anyways. Um, and we saw the tempo working last week. Um, I think Josh Allen plays better. You know, he talked about last week, you know, maybe I got to stop thinking so much and just play football. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's who Josh Allen is. When you see, you know, down the stretch of these games when he's just dropping back and letting it fly. Um, I was talking to a buddy about this last week. They're trying to make Josh Allen into much more Peyton Manning um, when Josh Allen is much more of a Brett Favre with a running aspect to his game. You know, he's he's a gunslinger. And is he going to throw some interceptions down the field? Yeah. And honestly, I'm fine with that. The turnovers are happening anyways. Um, it's this, you know, getting the ball deep in your own territory and, you know, you go three and out from inside your own 10 and you're punting it. Just, I, I got to walk a line here because I also don't want them, you know, bombing it down the field every play. Um, but it just feels like they cut the reins on Josh too much. And... You know, in the beginning part of the game to me, like I said, it, it looks like he's scared to run and it looks like he's hesitant to let the ball go. 
and the Josh Allen that that's going to win us football games. He's got to be playing free. He's got to be playing fast. He's just got to be playing football. Um, and it, it's not to say that he's not a smart smart quarterback. That, you know, can't read and process defenses and all that. I think he's plenty capable of doing that. I think he's really good at doing that. Um, but he said in the past, you know, he's got to take that first hit in the game. It helps him get in the rhythm. All that, um, all that still applies. And I think we've seen that from him in the past. And I think we've seen it this year when when they let him do it. So I think just overall, if this team is going anywhere for the remainder of the season, um, that performance that you got from from the defense against the Bengals, I think that's about the best you can ask for. You know, granted, there was a lot of yards given up. I'm, I'm not taken away from that. But you came you came into this game with you know, an offensive powerhouse and the defense did enough to, to have the offense in the game. And you have to, you have to be able to rely on this offense to score 27, 30 points when needed, um, for the talent that you have on this offense, um, the assets put into this offense, you know, going through three quarters of the game, more than three quarters of the game with 10 points, it's it's just not good enough. Um, it doesn't really matter what your defense is doing. That's that's not good enough. Um, even if, you know, the defense held the Bengals to seven, I would still be sitting here saying that's not good enough. Um, especially when you look at the fact that all the investments this offseason, damn near, were made on the offense. Um you got a first round pick in Kincaid. You got uh, Osiris Torrance in the second round. You brought in um, Deontay Hardy. You brought in Sherfield. Um, brought in Latavius Murray. Brought in Damian Harris. Like all of these investments were made. Connor McGovern. All of these investments were made on the offensive side of the ball. And the defense kind of got some, you know, afterthought additions. Um, this offense needs to be able to carry this team. And. You know, at, at this rate, that's the only way you're winning football games. The the losses that you've had on defense are are huge. Um, they've done some things to try to, you know, mitigate that. But in season, replacing Daquan Jones at the level that he was playing with, playing at Matt Milano, what he means to this defense. Trey White finally coming back into form. You know, some of those veterans on the team getting another year older. Um, hopefully, you know, Von Miller continues ramping up and and he starts being effective. But where he's at right now, I, I guess that would maybe be the one thing that I would be changing right now. Uh, I think until he's back to who he is, um, that he's got to <laughs> he's got to drop back in snaps right now for a little bit. Um, just not getting enough out of him. And, and understandably so, you know, he's an older player ramping back up after an ACL um but you just don't have to give him that big of a snap share if he's if he's not contributing right now um continue bringing him along slow and you know hope that you got him for the playoff stretch and hope that you get to the playoffs um but right now he's not playing good enough um but all all that being said you know the losses that this defense has sustained I mean at a certain point in the game, you had Dane Jackson and um, Christian Benford both, you know, dealing with some injuries. And you had Josh Norman lining up at one cornerback and Razul Douglas, who's been in the building for like three days at the other side. Uh, Josh Norman's got like, you know, what, an extra five days? 35 <laughs> year old cornerback that was a free agent a week ago. I mean, they're out there playing snaps and the offense that the Bengals have, you kept them to 24. You need your offense to be what bails you out there. Um, what do we look like going forward? I mean, going into the bye, if you're not at least two and one, I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not a fan of making in season, you know, big decisions. I don't see it really being McDermott's way, but something's got to give and. Am I opposed to, you know, 
dropping Ken Dorsey and hoping, you know, you can have Joe Brady be an interim and that gives you some sort of spark. And then you revisit it next off season. Maybe that's something that has to happen. Um, Cause right now it's, it's just not getting it done. And you got to go into this by at, at least two and one, and then kind of reassess through the bye week and be ready for that long stretch. But you got another, you know, two out of these three games coming up are more games in conference. You've lost enough of those. Um, you're seeing the Jets again. No, they they have a really good defense. I'll give them that. But their offense is still led by Zach Wilson. You know, they they've managed to get to four and three. Not an opponent that you can take lightly. Um, like I said, the Broncos took down the Chiefs. Not an opponent that you can take lightly. Um, so there's not a, a ton of time to get this figured out on offense, but they need to do it quickly. And hopefully this this Broncos game gives us a chance for the offense to get right. Getting pretty sick of saying that this year. Um, you know, some of these teams that, you know, even though they're tougher teams, are teams that you expect to beat. So it, it feels like there's been you know, three, four games where, you know, the Giants game, you were hoping the offense would get right. Um, we barely squeaked by on that one. Um, the Buccaneers game, offense looks better, still ends up coming down to, to the last possession. And it's because we have, you know, the offense starts out good and then they fizzle out and have like four consecutive punts. Um, really just need to start seeing a full 60 minutes from this offense. And I'm not saying they have to score on every possession, um, but with your defense as banged up as it is, the players you're missing, you're not getting the same turnovers that you were in the beginning of the year. I mean, every possession is so much more valuable. And, you know, these three and outs, these bad interceptions, you know, deep in your own territory, you're just putting your defense in a terrible position. And at the very least from this offense, to help the defense out and give you a much better chance of winning. You at least got to sustain drives long enough that you can win some of this field position game. Like I said, this whole game against the Bengals, you know, that's a tremendous offense um, that you keep letting start at, like their own 40 yard line. Um, even even when the defense is getting stops there and and you're getting the ball back to your offense. Well, you didn't move the ball at all with your offense the last time you had it, so you're getting the ball inside the 10 again. Um, that's that's the biggest thing that needs to start happening is the points will come after. This offense needs to figure out how to sustain drives. And, you know, we saw, we saw a little bit of it yesterday where we had, you know, third and ones, and they're doing quarterback sneaks with Josh Allen. We saw so much of that in the past, and literally the third and one third and two territory you know we wanted to bring in this more physical running back so it's not always on josh allen i don't care if it's all on josh allen he had like 90 percent success rate on converting third and fourth and shorts you you had the qb sneak option you had you know the naked boot uh off the naked boot you had you know the tight end leak out triple option there was all kinds of things that led to wild success on third and short and keep doing that. This offense needs to just continue moving the sticks and get down the field. And I feel like if they can start doing that and start sustaining some drives, you have some athletes on this offense that can make some plays happen after that. You know, you get cook in the open field and he can burst out another 15 yards. The options are there. It's just a matter of this offense getting on track early and not coming into the game so sluggish. Um, so looking forward, like I said, next week we have the Broncos. Hopefully, hopefully a nice little get right game. Um, a lot to figure out before we go into the bye. Um, Philly's a team that's staring us down, but can't be looking ahead to that because neither of these next two games are a given. Um, like I said, a, a lot of work to do before you play the Broncos and a lot to do going down the stretch. Um, all in all, do I 
think this is still a playoff team. I think it can be. Um, I think there's still a realistic chance that you win the division. Um, Miami, Miami's looking like very similar team to the Bills in that they're lumping up some bad opponents and they play somebody with a winning record and they lose. It's kind of what the Bills look like this year. So, you know, realistically, like I said, there's about half a season left and you're one game back in the division. Um, realistically, they could still win the division. I'm not banking on that. Um, I think you're looking at a wild card um, spot at this point if you make the playoffs. Um, with this talent on this team, you, you got to at least get me to the playoffs. You got to give it a chance. Um, we've, we've seen teams... Like the Giants, you know, when they won the Super Bowl, win it from a wild card spot. Um, it's it's not, you know, out of the realm of possibility. And do I think there is something to be said for teams getting hot at the right time? I, I absolutely do. Um, and you want to be playing your best football, you know, December going into January, into the playoffs. But that being said... <laughs> You can't have the the level of stink at the beginning of the year um, because of the position that you've put yourself into now that damn near virtually every game left starts becoming, is this a must-win conversation? Um, who knows? Maybe this is where we see the offense really kick into gear because as I was talking about earlier in the episode, it seems like this offense only gets going when their back's against the wall. You know, fourth quarter, you need two scores to win, and all of a sudden they come alive and they either do just enough or fall just short. Maybe the back's against the wall for the rest of the season is what they need, and we see them come alive. Sure hope that's the case. Um, but anyways, that's going to do for today's episode. Um, like I mentioned before, please make sure you like, share, subscribe. We're dropping new episodes every week. Um, We'll be breaking down this uh, Broncos game next week. Hopefully, we're talking about a win. Um, But we will see you next week. Uh, Make sure you check out our website, wanderingbuff.com. Jake's doing a great job. We have some articles up there, some merch. Just It's a a great website. So do me a favor, swing by over there, take a look at it. Um, Until next week, as always, go Bills.